Okay, so you probably know who I am. My name's Rosie Hamilton. Um, I'd like to talk to you today about software testing. Uh, shameless plug, I'm on Twitter, at Rosacadia is my name there, yeah, if you want to follow me, yeah, if, you like, if you like what you hear today. Um, I also write for a software testing blog, and the URL for that is softwaretestingfuntime.blogspot.com. So, testing, a bit of an intro. Testing started for me in 2005. Um, my first testing job was working in the games industry. Uh, I was working for Xbox. Still remember my first day at work. I was working on a cricket game, <laughs> of all things. Um, I got paired up with uh, a more experienced tester, and we were testing multiplayer. And one of the first things that happened at the start of each multiplayer game was there was a coin toss, and what happened was whoever won the coin toss got to pick whether they wanted a battlefield. And I was player two, the experienced tester was player one, and I very quickly found out that once they flipped the coin um, and they made their choice, battlefield, on my gamepad, I could nudge it left or right, and I could also pick battlefield, because player two got to choose battlefield regardless of whether they won the coin toss or not. So that was my very, very first bug. So this is why it's all about coins, because it just reminds me of that. So uh, let's just get started. So software testing can be divided into two. Um, quite controversial in here. I've got exploratory testing. Now this was the kind of testing that I was doing when I was doing my games testing. Um, sort of exploring, you know, finding bugs, um, and scripted checking. Now, um, I've deliberately put scripted checking, not scripted testing. Um, it's quite, quite sort of controversial topic within the software testing community at the moment. Um, there was uh, so two experts, Michael Bolton, not the singer, um, <laughs> and James Back. They wrote a white paper earlier this year where they basically said that if it can be done by a machine, it's not testing, it's checking. So that's why I've put scripted checking, because these are, well, let's just have a quick quick look. So exploratory testing. This is like my, my game's job when I was testing my cricket game. Very creative, uh, looking for problems, generating ideas, applying them to software. As you're doing it, it generates more questions. So you basically you'll, you'll I don't know, click on something, and then something will happen, and then you might ask yourself, well, is this, is this supposed to be doing this? Um, focus on bug finding. So for me, this kind of testing was, in my opinion, the only, I thought this was the only way to do testing for, for a very, very long time. And then I came out of the games industry, and I encountered scripted checking. Now, scripted checking, um, more of a serious business, sort of, uh, I found that companies like Microsoft, um, people doing business software, they, they were doing this, this kind of testing instead, where it would be like test cases and test scripts, test automation, the main difference being that every single step was documented and you always got like a pass or fail. Um, a lot of focus on coverage, and in order to write sort of scripted checks, what had to be done was you had to be able to imagine up front, you know, what, what you're going to test. So avoid, to avoid like boring you to death and just basically going on this really sort of like dry topic of exploratory testing and scripted checking, um, I'm going to use an analogy to try explain how both uh, testing and checking fit into software development. So just use your imagination. I want you to try imagine that building software is like mining. <laughs> and I know it's a bit of a stretch of the imagination there. Um, so what happens when we're mining? Well, the ceiling, can, ceiling of the mine can cave in, or the floor of the mine could collapse. And more importantly, either of these problems could occur at any time or at any point without any warning. You, you don't know what's going to happen. You know. So in this mine that we've got, our fictional mine, all the developers are mining away at the coalface, and our testers are basically the mine safety experts. Now, we're, we're all on the same team, okay. even though we've got different, got different roles, so we've still got the same goals. So we're all sort of trying to work together and try and make the mine sort of productive. So the roles of the sort of safety inspectors, it would probably be to try and protect everyone in the mine so it was able to grow and be successful. Um, it's, uh, if you don't have any safety inspectors in your mine, then you're going to be in trouble, basically. Um, either there's going to be a nasty accident and uh, you're going to end up getting shut down by sort of health and safety or, you know, even, even worse, someone's going to get, like, really, really hurt. Um, so... We've got our safety experts, and they're in the mine, and they're doing their testing. And we've got the two, two kinds I've mentioned earlier. 
both sort of sides of the coin, the exploratory testing and the scripted checking. So exploratory testing, in the scenario of the mine, it would be things like exploring, looking for signs of danger, cracks in the floor, cracks in the ceiling. Uh, whereas the scripted checking, these would be more like the support pillars between the floor and the ceiling to try and prevent the mine from sort of falling in on itself. Yeah, that's um, that's so as with software, this mine at the very, very start of the project is going to start off really, really small. And it's eventually going to grow to be absolutely gigantic. It's going to be huge. So what would happen in this mine if we didn't have any support pillars? Well, right at the start, it probably wouldn't be a big deal. Um, but as, as the mine grew, as the project grew, um, what you're probably going to find is that bits of the mine which were previously okay could suddenly collapse without warning. Um, and likewise, if you had uh, nobody exploring your mine and looking for danger, right at the start, it's going to be fairly straightforward. Your mine's going to be quite small. It's going to be quite easy to cover all that ground, you know. Um, well nobody's sort of exploring looking for danger so um, basically what's going to happen is as your mind grows you're going to start missing really really simple things so you're only checking small small pieces and small small areas to make sure that they continue to work some of the you're not going to be using the software the way the end users are using it so you're probably going to get bugs slipping through right so <laughs> How would these testers in our imaginary mind find the best places to construct support pillars? Um, now, I've seen quite a few people. I've seen testers which have learned to automate. And one of the first things that they do is they sort of they learn a bit of programming and they know how to manipulate a browser and they're like, yeah, I can automate everything now. And then they sit down and they go to write some scripted checks and they have absolutely no idea what. Uh, they're like, well, what am I actually going to automate? What am I going to check? And this is uh, quite often seen as a, like, I guess there's a bit, bit of black magic there. It's like nobody really knows for certain what these support pillars yeah, should be. Um, but I can tell you now, it's, it's actually really simple. It's basically just risk plus common sense. So in our imaginary mind, a good place to write a scripted check <laughs> would be the entrance. And this would be something which would be absolutely critical if it failed. If the, the entrance caves in, nobody can get into the mine. Um, it's not going to be able to function as a mine, so thinking about writing scripted checks. Places where failure would be absolutely critical. Uh, we've also got sites of previous disasters. These would be sort of like precautionary checks. If uh, you've had something that's gone wrong in the past, you might want to put a scripted check in there. You might want something to sort of stop it from going wrong again, or at least to give you an early warning that, you know, something's not quite right. Um, I've got hazardous terrain inaccessible to humans on here. So this would be, in the analogy of the mine, if you had a tunnel which was like really small, too small for one of your yeah, mine yeah, safety yeah. experts to get into, uh, you should probably reinforce that with pillars or scripted checks to make sure that uh, it's not going to collapse. In the real world, this would be the equivalent of things which were too time consuming for a human to do, or too awkward for a human to do, or stuff on the back end that you, know, you couldn't access through the, through the UI, you know, places where it's difficult for testers to get to. Um, high traffic tunnels, things which would impact on a lot of people. So if you've got like a main tunnel going through your mine and everybody has to use that tunnel to get to the rest of it, you've got a path through your software, you know, you have to go through a certain menu to access the bit that everybody wants to use. Um, these are also good places to write scripted checks. And, and also complexity as well. So uh, in the analogy of the mine, places where you've got lots of tunnels joining together, places which are not standard, complex areas, good places for scripted checks or building pillars. So, on the other hand, um, how would the testers find the problems when they were exploring? Now, um, I have seen sort of generally new testers, when they sort of start learning to test, they will, they will come in and uh, they're very, very easy to identify. It does what it's supposed to do. Uh, they'll have a Jira ticket that says, it's supposed to do this, and they'll go and check, oh yeah, it does that, and then that's where they'll stop. <laughs> but um, exploring the mine is all about generating ideas. So when it comes to generating ideas as testers, what we can do, or yeah, mind safety yeah, experts, experience. So uh, you're going to start building up knowledge of where you've seen problems before. Um, when you've got knowledge and experience of, like, sort of what you've seen before, um, if you've got sort of documentation for your software, as well as following the rules, you'll also be trying to break the rules. <laughs> um, oracle comparison. Does anyone know what an oracle is? 
or is this a word that is just never heard before? Is it not Delphi? Maybe. <laughs> um, think of uh, think of the Matrix. You know, the Oracle in the Matrix, a sort of all-knowing woman. Uh, an Oracle is something which will tell you whether the test is passed or failed. So, in terms of software testing, this could be. Um, Let's just say you're replacing an old system, you're replacing a legacy system. You could go look at the legacy system, see what that did, and that could maybe tell you whether um, it's behaving as expected. Other ideas of oracles, uh, you could have an expert user, you could have a business user, knows exactly, in, or a designer, knows exactly in his head, you know, how it should be. So when you're testing, if you see something that's unexpected or you're not sure of, you should be sort of comparing to oracles. Uh, other ideas, um, playing with data, defaults, boundaries, extremes, um, but words ending in eon. <laughs> so disruption, duplication, trying to think of some more, uh, navigation, selection, uh, configuration, um, all of these kinds of words give you ideas about like things you can manipulate and how you can test. Heuristics, um, is this another word that you maybe not heard before? Yeah. Anyone know what a heuristic is? Blank faces. <laughs> okay. Um, heuristics are ways of solving problems. There's like shortcuts to problem solving. So the ones I've got on here, I've got Goldilocks. And in the story, Goldilocks had porridge which was too hot, too cold, and just right. So Goldilocks testing would be trying a value that's too small, too big, just right. I've got CRUD, which is create, update, delete. Create, update, delete. Um, and out of order. This would be sort of like. Um, I guess if you have a shopping cart, you would normally put your thing in the shopping cart, add a discount code, and then check out. So doing it out of order would be maybe putting a discount code in first, then adding something to the shopping cart, and then checking out. So trying to do things in strange orders. Uh, also things like opposite pairs. So we've got fast and slow, longest, shortest. So um, do something quickly, do it slowly. Type in long amount of text, short amount of text. Be sensible, be reckless, mandatory, optional. Um, exploratory testing is an absolutely huge topic. I'm going to stop right there. I don't want to go any further, but just to give you some idea of, of how our mine safety inspectors would be exploring the mine. So, next question. Why would it be a bad idea to try and support every single square millimetre of the ceiling with support pillars in this mine? <laughs> any idea why this might not, this approach might not work? Couldn't move. Couldn't move, <laughs> yeah. Um, it would also take far too long. It would also be very, very costly, very expensive. Uh, let's, uh, some, some people have this approach to testing where everything must be automated. Uh, wherever you do, don't fall into that trap. It's, it's, it's bad news. Again, what would happen if you made the, a human try to do the job of a support pillar and hold up the ceiling in the mine? Any ideas? Uh, yeah, they're, gonna cr they're probably going to cry. Uh, demotivated testers, demoralized testers. Um, yeah, also, it's like you've got testers acting as code, but you haven't got any of the advantages of code. So you might have, I don't know, uh, a tester executes a tested script one way and then another tester executes it a slightly different way and one sees a bug and one doesn't see a bug and straight away you haven't got the reducible, reproducible stuff that you normally get with code. Um, so just a quick summary, exploratory testing, um, going through the mine looking for danger. We've got a lot of positive things here. I'm not going to read them all out. I'm just going to leave them up on the screen. But generally, it's, uh, it's quick to start. You know, it's... A, it's uh, it's very changeable as your software changes. You, you don't really have to do much to, like, up, you don't have to keep updating loads of tests. Um, and we've also got some negatives as well. Negatives are mostly labor intensive. It is actually quite time consuming to, to think up all the ideas and apply all the, the ideas to the software. But um, yeah, you, you can get. Uh, can get through it. Um, so yeah, it's harder to record than scripted checks. We generally use things like mind maps for recording exploratory testing. So we do draw like little doodles, sort of like little maps of the mind, where we've been, what we've looked at. Um, one of the other one, the negatives on there I've got is perceptual blindness. Has anyone, anyone heard of this before? Maybe. It's like can't see the wood for the trees. If you have been testing a, a piece of software and you've been on it for like 18 months, uh, you could have the smallest thing wrong on the login screen and you've stared at that login screen for 18 months and you're never going to see the spelling mistake because you just become immune to it. It's the same, it hasn't changed, you become immune. We've got ways to mitigate that though. Um, pair testing, mob testing, are good ways to get around perceptual blindness. 
Um, one of the main ones for sort of financial software I've discovered with exploratory testing is it's very, very difficult to provide management with statistics. Like, they want to know how many tests are passed, how many tests have failed, and you're like, well, I don't even know how many tests I'm going to do yet. So, <laughs> um, again, scripted checking. Positives. We, we, there are some positives of scripted checking. Reproducible results, you know, if... Uh, if you, you run the tests, you're going to get one, one and once, you're going to get the same results as if you run them ten times. Um, very, very easy, easy to measure and generate statistics. So like I'm saying with financial software, if you've got product owners that want, uh, want to know that 200 tests have passed, then you know, scripted checks can give you this. Um, and the main reason that they're good is, is establishing that existing functionality is unchanged. So this is why you write unit tests. <laughs> yeah. But we've also got some negatives as well. Um, you can't define all possibilities. There's always going to be coverage gaps. Uh, also, large amount of time needed up front to prepare. Repetitive work for humans. Um, your ideas are kind of fixed, They're not flexible to change. I've also got on here pesticide paradox. This is another, another testing term. Has anyone ever heard of pesticide paradox before? Maybe not. Okay, <laughs> so basically the pesticide paradox is if you test your software in the same way, over and over and over and over again, you're eventually not going to find any bugs because your software is going to become immune to the way that you're testing it. Just like if you spray pesticide on a field, you'll, you'll kill off like all of a certain type of bugs, but the bugs will eventually develop an immunity to the pesticide. So, um, so yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> software becomes immune to the way that you test it. Right, so <laughs> giving you a summary of both, scripted che checking and exploratory testing. Um, just have a quick show, I mean, who thinks scripted checking is probably best? Let's just have a quick show of hands. Does anyone think scripted checking is good? It's good. It's good? good. It's good? Okay. <laughs> Would you do scripted checking on its own? No? Who yeah. thinks exploratory testing is good? Generating lots of ideas. More, more hands. Okay. Well, the best side of the coin is actually best to be on the edge. <coughs> so we need to find the balance between both sides. We need to find the balance between doing exploratory testing and having our scripted checks as well. Now, how do you know <laughs> if you are balanced? I'm just going to quickly run through some of the telltale signs that the, your testing on your project is not balanced. Some of these might sound familiar. So first of all, if you're not doing enough scripted checking, you're never going to have enough time to test sufficiently. This was like my experience in the games industry. Uh, your test team is going to feel understaffed. You may have may encounter a test team which has uh, been recruiting and has gone from two people to like 13 people, like swollen in size. Um, you're going to get simple bugs are going to slip through, but because it's going to be a regression testing nightmare, you're going to be trying to cover all of the mine, check everything's the same, nothing's changed, but you're never going to get through it in time because you haven't got enough scripted checks in place. Likewise, if you haven't got enough exploratory testing, uh, I've seen this at some financial institutions as well. Lots of time spent up front writing tests, even more time maintaining those tests, and possibly a demoralized test team as well, especially if you've got, not got any automation. And the very, very worst part about not having enough exploratory testing <coughs> is because you're not using the software in the same way as your end users, your end users are going to be finding the bugs. So, uh, so yeah, I, I hope, hope that isn't familiar. <laughs> anyway. So just a quick summary of, uh, of my talk today. Um, only doing one type of exploratory testing or scripted checking can lead to problems. You've got to try to keep that coin balanced on the edge. You've got to do a bit of both. Humans make good explorers, but not such a good choice for doing repetitive scripted checks. Exploring is good at identifying areas where scripted checks can be added. And whatever you do, don't try to automate everything. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. <laughs> Always consider risk and decide, you know, to put these checks in uh, in good places. So, just a couple of acknowledgements. Um, I got the idea for this talk after talking to someone called Robert Page on Testers.io, which is a Slack group. Um, anyone that's interested in testing or works as a tester, I would highly recommend that Slack group. Last time I looked, it had about 2,000 testers on there, so really active. And also, um, all the images in my presentation are from Creative Commons. So, yeah, that's. Uh, Thank you very much for coming and thank you for listening and uh, I hope I haven't talked too, too long. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you.